What is up, guys? Welcome to the Think Computers Weekly Tech Podcast. This is episode 230. And our podcast is, of course, brought to you by Amazon. If you go to thinkcomputers.org forward slash Amazon and happen to purchase something that gives a little kickback and keeps the podcast ongoing with me, of course, is my co-host, Ryan. What's going on, man? Uh, not a whole lot. lot. Lots of new stuff to talk about this week. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited to try uh, maybe a new game tonight. Just all sorts of stuff going on. Yeah, so for everybody who's in the live stream, we want to say what's up. And of course, this is our weekly podcast where we talk about tech and all of the goings on in the PC hardware world. Um, I This past week, yeah, I've, I've gotten into some cool stuff. I don't know if you guys can see behind me. I have it slightly That's, blurred, yeah. but there's some, there's some stuff going on back there, that which, which we'll talk about, which I'm, I was actually... One of the products that are back there is the product that I've wanted to actually like. I've seen it, I've been showed it, but I've never had my hands on it to actually test. Um, so we'll talk about that towards the end of our podcast. I'm really excited about that. Um, but let's just uh, jump into reviews this week. And for everybody um, who wants to follow along, we do have our full show notes page, which is linked in the description of either the video or if you're listening to audio, it's linked in there as well. So you guys can go ahead and follow along with us. Um, but first we have a gaming product from a company that I had not heard of before, uh, before receiving this. Um, you want to try to say it? EK, uh, it's, it you, do you say EKSA or EXA? I said EXA. EXA? Okay. I mean, I like it's for large, you know, uppercase letters and it could, I guess yeah. it could be an acronym, but I think EXA just, Sound okay, better. so it is the EXA E900 Pro, which Paul reviewed. Um, and this is a very inexpensive gaming headset. Um, it's 7.1 virtual surround sound headset. The design sort of looks like a HyperX Cloud, almost, if you guys are familiar with mm -hmm. that, just, I mean, based on looking at the pictures. Um, he said it's very comfortable. He said that uh, the sound quality he was very, very impressed with. Um, and for something that's only 40 bucks, like you think when it comes to audio, you, th you usually think the more expensive it is, the better quality it is. Sure. And, and that's usually that for a lot of products that that is how it goes. Now I do have to say when it comes to like beats, they're garbage compared to what other audio products that are around the same yeah. price. I, I feel like beats are garbage, but besides that, I feel that a lot of products are very like they're priced inaccurately and we kind of get that sometimes. So these sounded really good um, to him. And the biggest thing that he had said was that the microphone quality is really good. Now we can't show it to you here um, because it, for some reason, StreamYard doesn't bring my audio over from my computer um, mm -hmm. for some reason, but we have our audio clips in the review and he has a audio test of the Audio Technica AT2035, which is an XLR mic, which is what I'm speaking into now. So usually sounds really good. And then he has the uh, boom mic on the E900 Pro, and it sounds really good. I'm sure you know you've done a ton of headset reviews. The microphones on headsets are never fair. They're never good. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously some are better than others, but none of them are as, as good as like a dedicated microphone. The only one that I, the only one that I've ever s seen and used um, was the one Sennheiser gaming headset. That microphone sounded excellent, mm -hmm. and I think this microphone sounds better than most gaming headset microphones because they usually sound like I don't even know the word to try. They're just to a little it. tinny, usually. Yeah, metallic. Yeah, you know, just yeah. yeah, they're just not very good. Um, so. That's the biggest thing that sold me on this because there are $100, $150, $200 gaming headsets where their microphones don't sound remotely close to as good as this. So definitely uh, check out these audio samples. It's, they're just that good. Um, and like I said, it's just that good. And for 40 bucks, virtual 7.1 surround sound. Um, I've messed around with a bunch of different virtual surround sound uh, in headphones. It's decent. It's better than, like, say, a stereo headset, at least in my opinion, especially when you're gaming. So that's something to, to consider as well. Um, but he gave it a nine out of ten. Um, pretty much for forty bucks, you can't go wrong. We talk about products. Yeah. It's just like it's kind of a no-brainer to buy. 
And for 40 bucks, especially if like you're doing a, a new PC build and you know, you don't think about spent, you know, you don't want to, you want to try to save, you know, you're going to save around 50 to probably $75 by picking this up over say like a, a razor or Corsair. And it might even sound better. Um, that money can go a long way towards, you know, RGB memory or an NVMe yeah. SSD and things like that. That's a pitfall of like some of these, you know, videos and articles are like, oh, the $500 gaming PC or $700 gaming PC until you add in the peripherals, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's something that just people forget about. And so, and it's the nice monitor, to see a 40, a quality for, yeah, a nice monitor, but a nice $40 headset that sounds good. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. just, it's like uh, a no brainer. Um, so, the second product that we reviewed this week is uh, a another <laughs> portable. SSD. I love these. They all tend to be the same, but this one is a little bit different. So I, I kind of like it um, because I am a person who goes on adventures and I mm -hmm. go to places where electronics can get damaged. I do have a nice backpack, but you still want a little bit more protection. Um, so this is the Orico SV100 um, USB 3.2 Gen 2. So you're going to get read and write speeds. They rate this at 940 megabytes a second. But we got well over a thousand, uh, which you should get with most of these drives. Speeds on these drives are pretty much the same um, because you're it's the same bus. You know, you're not going to get a drive that's super, super fast compared to the other one. Um, and the big difference with this drive is that it has a rubberized housing. I wish I, I, knew I think it just makes out. so much sense, like to have that integrated cable storage there. Yeah. So. Where'd my cable go? Oh, guess what? If I put it into the integrated holder, I know where it's at. Yeah, so two things with this drive. First is that it has the uh, rubber housing around it, basically protects it, and it makes it waterproof because on the end, you have this little door that when, it, when it's closed, it's fully waterproof. So you could submerge this in water um, and you more, more than likely don't have to worry about your drive getting you know messed up that's great because yeah. i've been out in the woods um hiking and i have a backpack that has my camera gear it does have portable ssds in it um just because i i offload stuff when you know uh sd cards fill up and i've had it where i've gone in pouring down rain and um luckily my backpack is a waterproof but you know water some water can get in and you just worry about it so you have this housing that basically makes it waterproof it also makes it easier to pick up and it makes it so it doesn't move around or scratch your desk so many of these portable ssds are made of metal you have them sitting there they move around on your desk and you're just gonna like i have this nice white desk that i love and like if i had a scratch mark on it i would stare at it all day <laughs> yeah so so that is uh the one thing and then secondly you have this holder for your cables it does come with two cables you have a usb type c and then you have a type c to type a they both will fit in here um not together but either one or the other and it's just nice to have this because again so many times i'm like oh yeah i have my drive and then especially with a type c uh drives when i first started getting these drives i only had one type c cable because i have an iphone which obviously doesn't use type c i had nothing else that had type c so i only had one type c cable I forget that cable. Mm -hmm. I'm, I can't access my data. So just having it on this little storage thing that they, you know, uh, give you is pretty cool. Now, the one thing would have been nice is if one of these connections was actually a connection into the drive. Yeah, like attached. Uh, yeah, like attached. Uh, because again, this doesn't do me any good. Like if it's always attached, it just makes it so much easier, I think. Um, but, but overall, I think this is a really great drive, um, comes in, I believe 128, 256, 512 and one terabyte versions. We reviewed the 512 gigabyte version. Um, and like, if you look at our test results, it is quite fast. Um, and again, all these are, are relatively around the same, but if you look at, you know, uh, over a thousand megabytes a second in crystal disc mark, and you can see kind of where it sits. Uh, in read and write speeds, these are all relatively close um, when you get to the USB 3.2 Gen 2 drives. Um, but very fast drive, highly recommended for a portable game drive, for a portable editing drive. Um, those are the two biggest things I would say. But even if just a fast drive to transfer data from home and work, or a lot of you guys are working from home, just an extra drive to maybe do your work on that you know is going to be really fast. Um, so yeah, I believe I gave this 
pretty sure I gave it a nine out of ten. I could be wrong. Um, oh, I only give it an eight out of ten. Oh, that's the reason. Software totally forgot. Price does not come with okay. software, which a lot of these don't, which isn't a hit on. Yeah, it. I don't They're necessarily all... expect one on like a, a fast SSD. It's not super high capacity, so you're not really using it as a backup drive. You know? Yeah. So. Um, but it is right now. It's one fifty nine ninety nine. For the 512. Okay. For the 512. A 512 gigabyte uh, ADATA SE800 is around, I think, $79.99 or $89.99. And this, the Sabrent Rocket Nano, these are two drives that we, we reviewed. Um, similar speeds and similar. The, uh, the ADATA drive is IP67 rated, which means it is waterproof as well. Um, they're, they're $60 less, basically. Um, okay. That is a lot of money. Um, and for no, I don't see a reason why this drive is so much more expensive. Um, it performs around the same. It's USB 3.2 Gen 2. Uh, the only thing is the extra housing, which adds bulk. And again, the A data drive is IP67 rated and is smaller. So it's like if it was priced at 100 bucks, I'd be okay, even though it's still a little bit more expensive than the other ones. But it's one fifty nine ninety nine, which just makes it really yeah. expensive. So I kind of knocked them on that. Uh, but it's a good drive. It's just, yeah, it's it, the price just kind of kills it for me. Yeah, they um, fix that. Otherwise, yeah. it's a pretty good product. And again, that price might be based on availability because of uh, coronavirus and kind of what's going on in the world and supply issues. We've seen that with the. What's the mixer that we both want to get that can never be found? Go again? XLR. Yeah, the Go, Go XLR. XLR. Either one. Yeah, either one can't be found, and you can I'm buy them on Amazon. Now. Yeah, you can buy it for a thousand dollars on Amazon if you want it that fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, that could be an issue too. But at least right now, this thing is priced way too high. It should be a hundred dollars or cheaper. Um, so, but it is a good drive. So, guys, definitely uh, check that review out. And uh, that brings us to Case Mod Friday. And this week we have a build in a case that we haven't seen a build in at least for a little bit. Oh, this was wow, like yeah. a, this was a case that a, a lot of people build. did builds in. Um, this is called Roll Cage. It's from uh, Metallic Acid Custom PCs. We featured a bunch of his builds before. He custom painted the uh, which one is this? Is this the Mini? Yeah, the D Frame Mini mm -hmm. um, custom paint, and this is an Audi paint, he said. Um, oh. And one thing that's that's interesting about it is on these D-frame builds, we typically see, like, you want to show off the motherboard or whatever, but what he did is he made these custom brackets um, to hold the graphics card up front, and then you have the res here up front as well. Um, and I think it's really cool. I You don't see a whole lot of the internal of the PC. He had a, does have it kind of open here, so you can see the memory and some of the, um, the the water block and stuff. But I, it's just like, it's clean. It seems very clean to me. Yeah, it, there's um, not a lot of cabling. It's like super basic cooling. It's just a CPU that's water cooled. So you don't have the extra block and cooling for the video card. But I love that light pink accent to it, right? Mm -hmm. The fluid isn't like a solid, uh, I'm sorry, I said pink, I mean purple. Um, yeah. The you know The fluid's transparent with a little bit of that purple glow to it. I, th I think this build's amazing looking. Yeah, it's very, very clean. Very I love nice. the chunky tubing, right, of the frame as well. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, very cool. And it's nice to see, we've seen some of these painted like crazy, like uh, yellow mm -hmm. and really kind of like vibrant colors where this is like, again, this is a car paint, uh, the Audi silver as it, what he said. Um, and it just, it just goes really well. Like cable management's really good in the back too. Um, it's pretty cool how he cut out uh, this section for the radiator too. Like it just all kind of works and goes together and I think it looks really good. So definitely uh, check that one out. That is again from Metallic Acid Custom PCs. And uh, we have a new contest, which we talked about. Uh, didn't I say last week we we're launching a new contest? Did you did. That? Super excited about it. And I see why now. Yeah. So we are giving away a motherboard. We don't, do a whole lot of motherboard giveaways we try to right. you know we usually do is keyboards headsets some other hard drives yeah, something that doesn't like lock you into a form factor or a you know a um what am i trying to say an ecosystem i guess yeah yeah um so 
Yeah, so we, we just reviewed it. Uh, we are giving away an Asus ROG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi, the exact same one I reviewed. It is not the exact same one. Like, it's not used. It's brand new. It's sitting back there. Um, so I actually have it here. I will be shipping it out to the winner. Super easy to enter. This is running for one month, so you have a ton of time. You can see there's 26 days left. Um, over 6,000 entries already. Only thing you have to do to enter is sign up for an email newsletter. And then once you do that, you can unlock 18 more ways to you know, get an entry in. Um, I like this board. This board is great. Um, remember with B550, you're still getting Gen 4 speeds on the top PCI Express slot and the top M.2 slot. So you're going to get those super fast speeds for you know if you have super fast drive, uh, which again is obviously the reason to go B550. So, uh, so yeah, get your entry in super easy to do. And, uh, hopefully, like I said, we always do these giveaways just to give back to you guys. So, uh, you know, so yeah, so get, get your entry in. No, I like um, that one. Yeah. Great. And, uh, that brings us to news this week and we haven't heard AMD graphics card news in a, in a while. I would say, <laughs> I think that it's kind of been on the DL we've heard some stuff from nvidia and all that but amd it's been a little bit since we've heard some news and this past week um we got some at least some info or rumor about uh amd's rdna2 based gpu um of course a lot of people know this as big navi we've been hearing about it for a long time but we haven't like i said recently we haven't heard a whole lot about it um, and this comes from, uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Moore's law is dead. He's a YouTuber. Um, he's saying that it will be 40 to 50% faster than the RTX 2080 TI. Um, and it will come out in September. That's, that's a pretty lot. soon. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty soon. And that's very fast. Now you have that's to remember best. too, is that we will see a new NVIDIA graphics card around that time yep. too. Um, 3080 series or 3000 series. So we don't like, yeah, it might be 40%, 40, 50% faster than a 2080 Ti, but a 3080 Ti will be out at least around that time. Sure. Um, maybe a little bit after. So it's like, we do see this and we get excited again. This is a rumor. So take it with a grain of salt. But if it even were the case, we see this where like NVIDIA or AMD is like, yeah, it's faster than this. And then NVIDIA is like, yeah, we have this new thing coming out. Just wait. And then you wait a month and it's so much, you know, so much better. It's always like catch up, I feel, when it comes to graphics cards and AMD. Um, but if it is yep. that much faster, you have to remember that we never got a high end graphics card from AMD on their 5700 series. Never yeah, we just got. got the XT, right? 5700 yeah. XT and that was it. Yeah. So you could, you know, but that is a, the, obviously it's not going to reach Ampere performance, but well, you know, that we know of. Um, but I'm guessing the pricing, though, is the thing where they're probably going to be a little more competitive, you know, beating, yeah, I, hopefully beating 20 Ti performance and at a lower price. So I just I'm fine with that. 40 to 50% faster just seems with, like even That's NVIDIA's own cards don't typically do that. Right, that's a big you know number I mean? to. Yep, I can't remember the difference between a, a ten a ten eighty Ti and a twenty eighty Ti. Wasn't it like to go back? Fifteen. I don't feel like it was the time. I don't feel like it was enough um, of a jump because I was considering, you know, going to that for for my next card, um, and then obviously when the pricing came out for it, plus you know they were really hyping. Uh, RTX, it just didn't feel like it was enough of a gain. So I don't, yeah, I don't know that it was, it was nothing close to 40 to 50%. Yeah. Yeah. So I think this is a little bit exaggerated. It just kind of has to be like, I just don't see it. But again, I mean, look at Ryzen too, you know, right. they just keep blowing uh, it out of the water. So. Yeah. But I, I always get very excited for AMD when it comes to graphic stuff. And then you're eventually disappointed. I hope that trend changes. But not that the 57, 56, 5700 no, 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 were yeah, disappointing, yeah. right? They were they they weren't disappointing. And I really actually I actually recommended the 5700 XT yeah. to a lot of people because at four hundred dollars, it's performing to like a six hundred, seven hundred dollar uh at the mm -hmm. time. 
uh, NVIDIA card. So yeah, like they did really good in that. But they, in order for people to take them seriously, I think they need to take on a flagship NVIDIA graphics card, yep. right? And they haven't done that. Um, so so we'll see. I uh, Again, I think September is going to be a really interesting time, you know, um, for all of this. And, you know, but again, this, this is just rumors. We really can't, you know, we can speculate and say that, but it's just, sure. it's just rumors at this point. But it's good to see some AMD GPU news, you know. Um, I think that kind of been missing it because uh, it's been all NVIDIA recently. Um, and talking about Maybe NVIDIA, a Intel, right? Yeah, and a little bit of Intel. Um, but talking about NVIDIA, um, it appears that they have ended production of their GeForce RTX uh, 20 series Turing graphics cards. Um, this, of course, is to get rid of the current inventory of uh, their, you know, the current graphics cards to make room for their upcoming 3000 series graphics cards. This kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, it's, it's not really like news. Really. So it's, it's obvious, but yeah, it's, I mean, obvious. it's kind of a milestone, right? In the whole process and life cycle of a card right there. Well, yes. it's done. So yeah, it's, you know, it's, that's just like, it, but it, this does make you think that, okay, these cards are coming because if we're stopped making the previous generation, that means that the new generation is coming. Right. Um, build and up inventory orders, and yeah. And orders could already be ready for the new generation, um, you know, so it's sure. it's definitely this whole September, October, November timeline that we kind of have kind of seems like because when, when we first heard it, we seemed like, oh, no, we won't see anything till next year. But now it kind of seems like the end of this year, we're definitely going to get new graphics cards. So that's that's something to look forward to for sure. Um, and talking about NVIDIA, uh, we talked about AMD announcing their bundle. Uh, NVIDIA has announced their game bundle um, and it is Death Stranding. So Death Stranding will be available on all RTX graphics cards. So from 2060 to 2080 Ti, you can get Death Stranding. Um, I've heard really good things about this game. Like I heard it's really beautiful. I know nothing about the game. Yeah, I was really excited about it when it, they were first showing some teasers and it just looked like the it was intriguing and so mysterious and creepy. And there's this baby, and like all this, just just craziness. And then like we got closer and closer, and I just fell off with it. And then I see these screenshots of like, and the memes about the guy carrying boxes on his back and this backpack that's huge. And I just, I never really felt like there was the hype once it was released to keep me excited about it. Plus, it's not on a, a platform that I, you know, care about until now. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I've, I've heard it looks really good on PC, yep. obviously. Um, and I think that, uh, it has, you know, ray tracing and DLSS and all that kind of stuff, um, which is going to make it look even better. Uh, but yeah, you'll get it for free. Um, and it's not only the graphics cards, but if you get um, any desktop or laptop with an RTX series card, you will um, be able to uh, get it as well. And it's from now till July 29th. Um, so if, yeah, free game, check out yeah. uh, for sure. So we can have left. It is. Uh, it, remember, you used to be able to get like three games. Uh, it still happens. Yeah. It's not as you got to buy a, you know, like MSI. You had to buy the motherboard and the yeah, yeah, yeah. monitor and something else. And but um, and here's a, another gaming story. Uh, so uh, who makes Watch Dogs? Uh, Ubisoft, right? Yep. Yeah. Ubisoft had their online uh, event here a couple days ago, um, and they were showing Watch Dogs. Uh, Legion, which is the new Watch Dogs game. And uh, apparently it was running on an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p and it couldn't even get over 60 FPS. Um, this is with ray tracing turned on. Obviously, it's yes. not like super optimized, but I would say that this is only expected. Th these new games with the amazing graphics that they're going to have, you also turn on all the the RTX and the computing that you need for all of that. It's no surprise. I'm not really surprised by this. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's the next uh, generation, and sure, maybe the first 
couple you know iterations of rtx games rtx enabled games could run on that hardware but now they're able to take more advantage they've learned how to program for it right and make things look better well making things better probably takes more hardware on and on top of that the next like this is i mean obviously you can see like the pictures are you know uh rtx uh stuff you know that they're probably testing this um in-house like you know ubisoft in-house is testing this on next gen hardware oh sure. that ha- that has and we know for a fact that the next gen you know rtx 3000 series will have more rt cores mm-hmm. so this yeah it's going to run like if you turn rtx on it's going to run like crap on a on a 2080 but 3080 we have more um you know we have more uh what else the word i'm looking for i can't talk tonight <laughs> We have more resources to to sure. do all of that. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I'm not really surprised by this. I think we'll see this with a couple of games until we get that new hardware out there and they can actually talk about it. Um, yeah, so not not necessarily surprised. I never got into Watch Dogs. Um, old man said he, he said he needs to get around to play Watch Dogs too. Yeah, it was like free on something, and I have it. I just I never got into I it. I think that's kind of how I am too. I have a free copy of one of them. Yeah. I feel like there was like some downtime to a service and we got some games and that was one you could choose maybe. I mean, I forget. Uh, I know I have it. I know I have it, Um, but I've never played it. So Uh, an interesting thing is happening with Intel CPUs. Um, So right now a Core i5 10600K is selling on uh, Amazon for $289.99 and new egg for $299.99. Um, that is above the actual MSRP of the chips, which should be $262. Um, and then if you guys haven't heard of Silicon Lottery, we've talked about them before. Basically what they do is buy chips and they guarantee um, all core overclocks and their normal uh, boosting clocks as well, because you know that's why it's called Silicon Lottery. Because when you buy from Amazon, it is like a Silicon Lottery. You don't know if that chip is going to overclock well enough. You right. don't know if it's even going to perform normally well enough. They take the risk out of it for you. Yeah. So buying from Silicon Lottery means that you're going to take the risk out of, out of it. They've tested it. They know that it's going to run um, guaranteed all core overclocks. It's guaranteed. So if you plan on overclocking. Um, it might be a better idea to get one from Silicon Lottery. Right now, um, they sell a Core i5 10600K uh, starting at $289 and going up to $419. They have a $299 option that is guaranteed to overclock to 4.9 gigahertz on all six cores and 5 gigahertz on two of the cores. That, to me, seems like a much better deal than paying $289 or $299 on one that might not even come close to that right yeah what you say? yeah um, now what is the what does the 419 option get you oh uh, i didn't look uh it's, it's for that same chip right yeah i think that's let's see here core we can we can go to it um core i5 you're doing it live 10, 409 10 600k that's 5.1 5. 5. 1. 1. yeah okay. across uh Five up, up on one six across six, five point two yeah. on two cores. Okay, yeah. So that's a big price jump between yeah, a couple hundred megahertz. Probably because they had to test hundreds of chips just to get that. Yeah. Um. So I just think that this is really interesting because you can get a binned CPU for much no no around the same price as a a, a retail chip, right? Um. I, I think it's cool. I, I I I very much highly support Silicon Lottery and what they do. Um, some people think it's crazy to buy. You know, you can buy a retail one for much cheaper typically, um, but you would never know what it's going to do. I I've have, you know we test. And they have a warranty as well. Yeah, they have a warranty and everything, so uh, it is well worth it. I would say to go that way, especially now with, with this going on and the price, uh, the prices on Amazon and Newegg, it's, it's definitely worth it. So definitely something to check out if you're looking to buy an Intel chip. And uh, we have some interesting comments about, uh, we talked about it a little bit and it was, it is a big deal in the industry as far as 
Apple making their own chips. Uh, we talked about it. It is a big deal. We're not Apple guys, so it's not a huge deal to us. Uh, we'll likely see an Apple based Mac in 2021. Uh, but that's a huge market. That's a massive market, probably bigger market than our enthusiast PC gamer market, you would think, right? Um, so anyways, um, an old, uh, former Mac employee, um, he said that, you know, Microsoft and PC users will have to transition to ARM based processors as well and get away from Intel. The main reason for this, and the, the reason that he had said this is more or less, not only performance, but on top of that is battery because it's much lower wattage, um, you know, Battery life on laptops is important oh, to a lot yeah, of people. Like king, almost yeah. right. If Unless it's not you're your like first, it, if it's not your first requirement, it might be your second or third. So, yeah. Um. Really quickly in the chat, uh, Nelson said, "When will we see Big Navi?" Uh, probably based on the leaks. You know, in what I would say, uh, late September. I'm guessing. That's a guess. Uh, we we had talked about it really quickly, but. We'll probably see something around late September, in early fall. October. Yeah, early fall. in the fall. I would just put it out there too, in the fall. Um, but back to that, back to Apple. I think that there's well, one, they're smart for making their own chip. Yeah. If it's if you can have a laptop that you can use, you know, Wi-Fi on, everything like normal usage, that can get you a very long battery life. Uh, it's going to sell over something that's not. I always look at battery life if I'm buying a laptop because I know that I'm going to be on a plane. Every year I go from <laughs> Pittsburgh yeah. to Vegas on a plane for CES, probably not this year, but you know, every year. And I know that I have, that is a four and a half hour flight or it's five hour or it's like four and a half one way, five the other way, whatever it is. I know that I need a laptop that can at least give me that. And that's like watching a movie, which is even more than a lot of these tests are. So yep. battery life is important to me. And this, they're saying that this, you know, the arm based Apple processor is going to use a lot less power than what Intel is doing right now. And uh, that other companies, you know, Asus, Dell, HP need to Gotta make a shift. Board. Yeah. Or more people are going to go for the Apple way, um, you know. I don't think that'll be the case. I don't. I don't think it'll push people to Apple necessarily, right? I. I feel like. I don't is this know. like I don't the think end of Intel? Is this the end, end of Intel? Intel? No. <laughs> I mean, you had AMD. Just, just think about it. You have AMD. Really put a dent in yeah. their desk, their consumer desktop processors. Mm -hmm. And even go after their, you know, uh, high end, uh, you sure. know, market as well. Then you have Apple going with ARM to make their own processor. And again, Apple is 4% of their current uh, mark or 4% of their profits come from Apple. So that's a big chunk. And then if all of these other companies use ARM to develop their own processors or whatever, I mean, what, what do they have left? <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I, really I think, think that, so. I think that once they get down in their process nodes, um, 10 nanometer, seven, you know, eight, seven, five, they'll be okay. But I think they're just behind in that. And that has a lot to do with power consumption, right? Um, on the processors as well. So once they can actually bring that, they can get their process node down. I think they're going to be okay. Um, uh, I but, mean, so you, you know, we're taught you taught you mentioned that you know AMD took so much of the, that desktop consumer desktop piece. I really wish that there was the um, uh, business world option for um, AMD, right? Because I'm just here on the Dell site, and sure, on the consumer side, I can get a Ryzen processor and a desktop. Mm -hmm. But they're only in like I just clicked real quick, like the Ryzen fives and sevens. They're only in Alienware or Dell or uh, you know, yeah, Alienware yeah. systems. Yeah. You go over to the business side, and the list of processors doesn't even show AMD. So they've still got such a hold in the business market. I, I don't, I don't see them going anywhere anytime soon. 
Yeah, no, I don't see them going anywhere, but it's like, could you imagine in like two or three years, Asus, Dell, HP having ARM based? Having an ARM? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But we've tried that a little bit. I, I feel yeah. like they're just not there yet. You know, we've had the netbooks and, you know, Intel Atom processors, and they never feel like they're up, to, you know, up to snuff. Yeah. I, we'll I would really like when the, uh, the new, uh, MacBooks come out with ARM. I would like to play with one or like compare them both. I'm sure mm-hmm. there's gonna be a ton of comparisons oh, uh, yeah. to, to compare them. So it'll be it would be very interesting to uh, to see all that. Uh, Paul is in the house. He said he's sorry he's late. Uh, what is up? And he said he's hope CS isn't canceled. I don't know, man. CES, uh, which obviously happens every January, they already sent an email out asking it was like a if, survey, right? Yeah, if the show would be better served. And what was it? July. Was it June or July? Was the, one of the so questions? Hot. Yeah, yeah, it'd be so hot there. Um, I, I, yeah, I just, I don't know. And a lot of these states are closing back up, and you know, and I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with CES. I would say for sure. Um, and Nelson says CES could could have a show. People wear a mask, have both six feet. Of, Six feet apart at CES, I just don't Oops. see happening. No, no, no. Um, it is so people. crowded. So CES is the largest uh, convention in North America, largest show. Um, probably over the two or three days, I think it's 300,000 people go there. And I've been in, especially like the main show floor where we well, used to have Intel running around there, but like, you know, you have the the TV, the Samsung, Samsung the, Sony's, the Samsung, Sony's like those booths are crammed. Like you can't move. Um, so six feet apart at CES just would not work. I just don't see it working. Um, yeah. Uh, Paul said he knows of some com- couple of companies that have already booked suites. Yeah, I know a lot of people. I mean, I usually book around this time, too. I just it's kind of hard for me to book right now. Cause I just don't, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. You know what I'm I mean? In the air right now. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, next story, which I'm actually super, this is probably the most exciting story for me all week. Yeah, I, I hadn't, I didn't, this wasn't on my radar and I saw the headline. I was like, Oh yeah. So cool. we know Galax or galaxy more, probably more galaxy in the enthusiast market. Um, they of course make the hall of fame brand graphics cards, motherboards, um, even SSDs are hall of fame brand. Um, I love their brand. I think that they are, they make really cool stuff. They just got into motherboards. I think starting with Z 490 or Z 390, maybe I forget. Um, but they recently got into motherboards and I think if they bring some of that DNA that they use for their graphics products, into the motherboards are going to be good. So they do have a good amount. Um, and it looks like they're going to be coming over to the American market. Um, they usually stay in the APAC region, um, which is th- there's, so it's galaxy in Asia or Asia. APAC stands for Asia Pacific, right? Uh, yeah. Um, but then there's like galaxy and some other, I don't know, but anyways, <laughs> they're coming, um, to the US. And I think it's great because in the motherboard market, we don't see too many new players. No. Right. Uh, the newest one was NZXT, uh, who has their N7 motherboards, which are actually made by what? Biostar or ECS? Biostar. Yeah. I think so. Biostar. Um, we don't really see many new players in the motherboard market. And I think this, you know, I think Galax can actually make an impact. Because the NZXT one really wasn't a big impact. They only made one motherboard. Um, we're going to have a full lineup here. I don't know when they, these are going to be coming over, but hopefully soon. Um, so that's so that's I, exciting. I Go wish ahead. they sh- they showed you know this image. They they're showing a couple boards and like they have a B five fifty and these H four ten boards. I wish they would have shown something a little flashier. None of them I have agree. like the integrated I O shield. The you know, they, nothing here looks flashy uh, or uh, yeah. gets me really excited. All the, other than the fact that that brand is, you know, coming uh, to our market, but none of the products that they showed are like exciting to me. Yeah. I think that they might be entering the market with these kind of lower cost boards to see, maybe to test the waters. Um, and then we'll see high end boards come after, but it, it's, it's always good to have another brand. Um, hopefully another brand that we, that we can work with as well. 
um, to get some reviews out there. Because again, I see like, I see their hall of fame stuff. I see this. I'm like, Oh man, I love that. But it kind of, it doesn't make sense for us to review it because our audience is based mostly from U S and Canada. So um, pretty cool to see that as well. Um, also this week, uh, DDR five was announced. Uh, JDEC uh, published the new DDR five memory standard. We know that DDR five will be in the next generation uh, Intel um, processors will support it. Uh, the big change, uh, one efficiency has been uh, improved from 1.2 volts to 1.1 uh, compared to DDR4. Um, you guys can read all the big differences if you want to get into it, but it's just good that we have the standard now. Um, one, memory companies are going to be making it. Two is that we will, you know, the uh, processor and chipset companies will be, uh, they now that the standard's there, they can add in support for it and things like that. So cool. uh, I'm just excited for that. Uh, yeah. DDR5. I've always like DDR4. been on DDR4 for a while. Have but we? I felt I felt I felt like we were on DDR3 for a really long time. No, we were on DDR3 like, three for a forever. Very, yeah, yeah, a very very long time. Um, now on to gaming news. So again, um, there was a lot of gaming stuff this week. The first thing, which I'm actually decently excited for, uh, the new poster for Far Cry Six was revealed. Um, one Far Cry is an awesome it's a, it's a really good single player game mm-hmm. um i've always been a fan of it we use it for benchmarking um and two the main villain in the game is the guy from um uh, breaking bad john carlo or what's his name um I I yeah watch. john carlo esposito um which is this guy right here yeah. for everybody in the live stream he was the one of the villains in breaking bad and great character uh so for them to get him um, I think will be really great for the game. And uh, yeah, they just kind of put it up on um, the Ubisoft store. What's it called? You play, you play. Yes. You play. Um, yep. So yeah, uh, probably going to have a really good story mode. I think, I think Far Cry games have had good story modes compared to some other games. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for that. Of course, uh, being a new Far Cry game, we'll probably use it for benchmarking. I'm guessing. Um and Nelson said, talking about Galax, Nelson said, Galax white motherboard, hell yeah. Um, and he said, I hope we get one for review. Me too. Uh, the the Hall of Fame, Galax Hall of Fame motherboard uh, that I believe they do have. And then if you match that. Their Kingpin the, stuff is pretty awesome. Yeah. And if you, but if you match that with their, their 2080 Ti or the 20, you know, 30 or 3080 Ti. Um, and then you they, they have a white, uh, M.2 SSD that has that cool heat sink on it too. Oh, yeah, that'd be a very, very cool. Um, the biggest sale of a video game ever recently happened. Did you read the headline or no? Don't read the headline. Don't read it. No, oh, you read it. Yeah. Oh, never mind. I read I the article ask. earlier this week. Oh, uh, I was going to ask you to see if you could guess how much. Yeah. Um, so. The game was a sealed original copy of Mario Brothers rated at 9.4 out of 10. Um, it sold for $114,000 at auction. Um, here you can see the picture of it. The buyer remains anonymous. Um, the previous record for the, the most money spent on a video game was uh, $100,050, uh, which was also for an original copy of Super Mario Brothers, which is in a very similar uh, condition. This Super Mario Brothers is more rare because it has this weird. Um, yeah, we don't have a picture of it. It's that cardboard it's, tab on the yeah, back. The yeah, top. cardboard uh, hang tab uh, that's on it. That's what makes it very rare. And when the as Nintendo started uh, releasing games in the U.S., they changed that out to something else. So the fine one and this good of quality uh, that has that hang tab is very rare. So pretty like cool. The hang tags underneath the the shrink wrap, so it's like a useless piece so it's like you know just one of those oddities and there's like hardly any of them that like that and anyway. yeah so pretty cool. i wonder who the buyer is ah who knows yeah yeah uh, that's, that's a lot, a lot, of, lot money. of money that's a lot of money especially for a game that i i, I mean you're not playing it it's just for a collection no. right sure uh, if you had the money would you buy it i i wouldn't if i had them well that's the thing if you have the money to buy a hundred and fifteen thousand dollar NES cartridge, you probably have the money to afford 
everything else you want to buy anyway. So yeah, that is sure. true. That's just a lot of money, but very cool. Uh, it now sits as the, the record for high or most money ever spent on a video game. So pretty, uh, pretty cool there. And uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. So were you ever into Microsoft Flight Simulator? No, I had like a Jane's, about like a Jane's Flight Simulator, and those are like the military ones that are super realistic. Okay. And that was like back when I was. It might have been late middle school. Man, yeah. I didn't play that thing at all because it was so complex. It had a manual that's like this thick. And but I, I'm kind of excited about this one. This one looks really cool. So when I was in high school, they had a setup um, with everything. Like it had oh, cool. all the all. I guess you could buy that. It had everything that had the had everything. Um, and it was a lot of fun to play. Um, and Microsoft Flight Simulator is the when you say it's like the standard when it comes to like yeah. there's a couple uh, others that are out there but i think this one's the most mainstream yet uh robust simulator flight you know i i hate to call it a game because it's a simulator yeah you can't have fun with it oh we used to have a lot of fun like fly, you, there's this one i forget where it was there was a building that had like a thing and you could like fly through or fly it. through it yeah yeah um but anyways uh so uh Flight Simulator uh, will be coming out August 18th. Uh, three different versions of the game. Um, so the normal game uh, will be available at $60. Uh, will come with 20 planes and 30 detailed airports. This is That's the standard edition. It will also be available through Xbox Game Pass. So if you have it, it's oh, nice. free. Um, so if you have Xbox Game Pass, you get it for free. Um, the second edition is the deluxe edition. It will be $90 have 25 planes in 35 detailed airports and then there will be a premium deluxe edition that will cost 120 dollars and come with 30 planes in 40 detailed airports um microsoft has also said that they will have dlc in the future uh scheduled so um there is cool. p it's pc only to start xbox version is expected later possibly to launch with the xbox series x do we know um, how yeah. big this game's going to be? I've heard it's just going to be enormous. Uh, I, sizes. I don't even know. I can, I mean, if you're you're fully detailing like an airport and all of you know the surrounding areas and things like that, it would probably be huge. I don't know. I would guess. What's your guess? I don't. I was going to say 200 gigs, but I don't know. Yeah, I would say something like that, like 175, 175 gigs, maybe. Um, it would be nice to like have like a setup and like have 150. all the stuff. 150 gigs. Is that a guess or you look it up? No, I just looked it up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot, but uh, it, a minimum of 150 minimum. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Ooh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a lot of space. Uh, for a simulator, for sure. Yeah. Um, so that is uh, our news for this week. We definitely don't uh, don't drop out yet just yet because we actually have a lot of pretty cool stuff to talk Watch. about. Uh, still, still more to still, talk still, about. Yeah, a lot more to talk about. So first, we'll talk about what we have coming up next week. Um, it is actually sitting behind me. You guys can see it. It is a Cooler Master uh, display. It is a monitor. It is their GM 34 CW. I've been testing it all day today. Uh, it is pretty nice. It, it's um, 34 inch ultra wide, uh, 1500R curve, which is a little different because like it's most ultra wide standard are 1800R. This is 1500R, so it's actually more curved, which is good for say like racing and more immersive like MMOs. But for FPS, I I haven't decided yet. I have to test it a little bit more. So that's why I didn't get to it this week. Uh, 144 hertz, one MS response time, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that is sitting behind me. Also sitting behind me um, is a pre-built. You guys can kind of see it back there. But I always do it. I can never do it like the right way. Like where I want to uh, yeah. yeah. So it's right there. You guys might be able to guess what it is. Uh, it is a new version. This pre-built system has been out there for a while, but this is a new version. And I really wanted to, like, again, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, I've wanted to get one in to just see how it actually performed because we've seen it at trade shows. 
you know, we've heard about it. We, I've seen videos on it, but I actually wanted to see how it was put together. And it's actually put together pretty well. I think I'm probably one of the only reviewers that opened it up. Um, yeah, you sent some pictures to me. And I was like, huh? Yeah. Um, cool. So you can open it up because it is a PC and you can change out memory and some other stuff. Uh, I don't think a lot of people are going to do that, but I wanted to see what was powering it and, and how it's done and, and all that kind of stuff. So pretty excited about that. I'll have that for you guys next week as well. And uh, this is where we talk about some of the stuff that we've been, uh, we've been doing. So why don't you first talk about uh, your new camera? My new camera. Uh, yeah. When did I buy it? Did I buy it? I bought it Friday, so two days after last week's podcast. So hopefully you've been able to tell a little better quality video it's kinda, here. It's kind of hard because it is in the, you are in the dark. Yes. Like, to tell the quality difference. Right, right. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I bought the Canon M200. So um, I already have a Canon M50. That's like my normal mirrorless camera that I shoot everything with, video and product photos and everything. Uh, but I picked up the M200 uh, because I wanted just a little better uh, video quality for, you know, this podcast stream and the the Twitch stream and everything. So, I, and then I, you know, I kind of went it back and forth. Like, Do I want to switch over to Sony? Do I want to, you know, yeah. it's pretty small. Yeah, it's a very small. I've seen it, one. It's, um, it's pretty compact, but it it's, you know, again, Canon's mirrorless uh, lineup. So all the lenses that I have for the M50 switch right over to the M200. So um, that was kind of an advantage there. It also has the uh, clean HDMI output, which the M50 does not have. So um, I'm using that right now um, with another product that I'll talk about in a second. Um, but it also supports, you know, Canon's, webcam utility across USB. So I've got that option as well. Um, so you, it's kind of versatile in that. Uh, that way it's got the flip up screen, which uh, is turned off. But uh, And then I got dummy power run into it, obviously, because the battery's not going to make it through a whole podcast and, and stream session. So i um, been pretty happy with it so far. I haven't messed around with it too much, um, but we'll get there. But I also connected it to the $25 capture card that you picked up a couple weeks yes. ago, maybe. Um, yeah. yeah, plugged it in. It showed up as like a, you know, USB device and it just started working. So. And there's, there's no lag. That was my biggest thing. It was yeah. like, this is no. a 25, well, it's 29.99 now. Um, I think it was like 35 but, when I bought it. I mean, it's uh, yeah, it, it, got, it goes around. It, up yeah. Over. But if you're look, if you have a camera that has a clean HDMI out, um, and you want, or if you want to like capture or say like, a console um, or yeah console or something like this something. everybody knows about the cam link or the cam link 4k which is like over a hundred dollars mm -hmm. um this is 30 bucks and i just pick one up just to just whatever i was yeah. like i think when i bought it it was 24 dollars um but i just like picked it up i was like yeah like if it doesn't work i can use it for something you know eventually but so it's my, working good my only complaint is that it's 30 fps capped at 30 fps right so um yes. which isn't like a crazy problem for especially for the price right um mm -hmm. i can live with the 30 um 30 fps 30 hertz uh, but yeah the input it'll capture 4k at 30 uh hertz um and outputs at 1080 30 so uh, yeah yeah i, 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 I think so it's... far it doesn't get hot like I, I just reach over and put my hand on it it's a little warm but it's been running for almost an hour i mean it's just barely warm to the touch so it's yeah awesome. Yeah, like I have mine. We talked about my Sony camera, the ZV-1 um, that I've been using. And it's hooked up just like that, USB mm -hmm. uh, power to the camera and then into that. And it just works fine. I highly recommend it, guys. It is much easier. Um, Ryan, talk, I don't, have you tested the software for uh, your camera? Like the app? Or? For the, the, have you tested the, the, the streaming software for the, the Canon? the the beta webcam utility yeah yeah, yeah. i've used it well, well the, i haven't i used it a little bit with the m50 i i used it for just a little bit on this uh, but i haven't like compared for, it or anything for mine the sony software that they have that allows you to do that you had some lag you, right yeah you'll get a more than noticeable amount of lag you now if you're a streamer you can fix that if you're using uh like uh, OBS, you can actually change the uh, 
the put a little latency. delay on your stuff. Yeah, you you can put a delay on it, but like right now, it's like if you're doing Zoom calls or stuff, you can't do that because if you're just selecting the webcam, you can't unless you really want to do it all through. You know, it's just too much work. Um, so that's all, like I said, that's why I picked it up. It was just so much easier to to just it was just plug and play. I plugged it in. And I didn't have to yeah. There's no software. You don't have to install anything. It just shows up as a webcam, uh, which is pretty cool. So yep. if you guys want to do that, um, any camera with clean HDMI out and uh, $25 capture card. So yeah. definitely. And then uh, I forgot. Yeah, I also got the uh, the Wise Band. I think I talked about ordering it. It came in. You did? Just a little like, uh, it's going to focus on my face because I got yeah, yeah. There it is there with the screen. It's got a little touch. It is. Yeah, Let's look pretty through. cool. I mean, for twenty five bucks, right? Like, how much? How many steps you got today? Let's... I don't know. Ninety three hundred. <laughs> nice. It's not nice. horrible. That's right? good. That's more My than heart I rate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I initially wanted to get it, mm-hmm. and then it was back ordered. I think because of coronavirus. Um, because yeah. I was like, okay, like I was never a wearable tech guy. Never. Mm-hmm. Never wearable tech. I was against it. I was like, I don't need it. Now that I, I went out and I bought a Gen 3 uh, Apple Watch because I have an iPhone. And I was like, okay, like this makes sense for me. Um, it wasn't cheap. I think I got it for 170 or 80, which is not 25. But I, w- I wanted the wise band because I was like, that was going to be my test. It's 25 bucks. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't like it, it's not a huge deal. Right. Right. Um, it's not, a, it's not a massive deal. Um, so I, that was going to be my test yeah. into, but then I was yeah, just, it was like, all whatever. activity tracking, you can customize it. Like there's some wise functionality built into it. So if you're already on the wise ecosystem with their cameras and lights and sensors and stuff, you know, you can add some activities to it. Uh, it, it has a ton of stuff that I, I don't know how they can do it for $25. And I, my data is sold and, already. So yeah. And it works with Alexa. I, I haven't configured that because I don't really uh, I don't utilize the A word that often um, other than like turning on my my yeah. lights here in the room uh, and like turning off my on the uh, lights in my bedroom. But basically, so not... but, but the thing is, but basically it is like a digital assistant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. and I think that is really cool um, as a digital assistant. It's yeah, I mean that just has so much more functionality for twenty five dollars. I think is really really cool. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I also wanted to tell you guys about a movie recommendation. It's not tech movie related, but I I think a lot of people will enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. It was one of the better movies that I've seen recently. Um, and of course, with a lot of people quarantining at home and staying at home and not trying to go anywhere, you want. And I've like flipped through so many movies recently and just seen some really bad ones uh this one was really good it's called the old guard that's uh, intriguing yeah uh uh charlize theron is the main character they're basically immortals uh it's really it's it's really good the action scenes are really good and it's um so it, it's definitely worth uh checking out if you have netflix it is on there uh so yeah, so definitely yeah, like that. Check it out. It is it's pretty cool. And the last thing, uh, real quick, uh, old man said he bought a Freezer 33 CPU f- for 20 bucks on Amazon. Um, didn't you review that? Yeah, I just commented. Yeah, it's not a bad cooler. I oh, looked yeah. at it when it came out, or at least the um, I think it was like an eSport version is kind of how they uh, yeah sold it. You know, it was kind of colored and it was a yellow themed one. Yeah, no, it was good. I've I've had quite a few of the Freezer products. You know. Uh, freezer 64 uh freezer 7 just in the past this was just as good as the others yeah uh oh like i said it's it's and cheap when you can yeah when you can find something cheap that works like well, what's the cooler master cooler the uh hyper 212 yeah the hyper 212 yeah i mean that's like, that one's tough to beat <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that one's really tough to beat. Um, but also, uh, I want to tell you guys because I think a, a lot of people, again, you're staying at home, you don't want to go to the grocery store as much. Um, you have been doing HelloFresh for what years now? Probably like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe um, two years. The these are and I and I just started with Home Chef. Um, these are the meal kits that come to you with all of the groceries, and then you cook the food. They're not super cheap, but 
I actually thought they were way too expensive to make it worth it, but I never go to the grocery store anymore because I do this. Um, that's time and that's extra money because a lot of the times you buy stuff and then you never use it and yep. it just and goes, it bad. And goes bad. Well, and right yeah. now it's, it's not just time and money. It's possible safety, safety and health, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I had started Home Chef maybe two months ago and then I recently start, started HelloFresh and I just – I wanted to see like if there is any differences and I do have to say that I do like home chef a lot better. Um, the quality of the food, at least in my first box, um, wasn't great compared to, to home chef The the taste was okay. Uh, compared to home chef and the directions on home chef are much better. I know that like, even I know, uh, the temperatures that meat should be at and things like that. But on hello fresh, it doesn't say like cook the, thing you know cook the steak to at least 135 for medium rare like it doesn't tell you that whereas in home chef it does the directions are a little bit better in home chef in my opinion um but i've been i'm i've only had one box from HelloFresh. i've had about four or five from home chef so i would recommend home chef but i'm still i'm going back and forth which i think you should tell me what you had like i I forget what you had ordered i know i I need to look again i had sent it to you um but I think that a lot of people, you included, Ryan, you should go back and forth because I Probably. do feel that a lot of this, the things are the same. Um, and, you know, their menus don't – they do change, but they're – you get re- repeats of the same sure. thing. Whereas if you're switching between the two, it is a little different, I think. Well, and so. since you can pause, right? I don't know how yeah. uh, Home Chef works, but like HelloFresh, you can pause and like – stay paused for however long and they're not going to ding you or anything. So you could go like back and forth. If there's really no options that you like on one of them that week, or you've had them recently and yeah. you know, don't want just go to the other one for the other week. That's what I do. So on both on home chef and hello fresh, you can just skip that week. So I look at both menus and I'm like, okay, I'd rather have this stuff than this stuff. I skip that week and then I just alternate them. That's what I've been. That's my plan. I like, I, I want to add a third one. What's the blue apron. I want to add yeah. blue apron. But that's a lot of jungle though. Like you're going to forget one week and you're going to have three boxes show up. (laughs) Yeah. So that's, that's the thing that I worry about, but it is nice to try them all because you know, why go with one when you can try the different ones? That's, what's kind of nice about them. You can pause. So that was my thing. Totally non-sac related. Um, but I think it went, it might help some people out who are like, again, it's just safer to not go to the store. And I do think I was, I was against these. I was like, this is dumb. One, it is. It's like ten dollars per person, I think, per meal per or meal? something. Yeah, or something yeah, like that. About. Yeah, so it's yes, yeah, twenty bucks. Uh, for so I get two for two for Kayla and I. Uh, it's twenty bucks per meal for her and I. Um, so uh, that is decently expensive. I'm like this is way too expensive. But then again, I'm not going grocery shopping at all mm-hmm. because I have the I have everything that I need. Um. It it does make sense to me now. So yeah, no, I'm, no, if you're I'm a converted. That, if you're a person that likes those leftovers, or whatever, usually you're not going to have leftovers. On like, there's only been yeah. a few things where we've had enough to you know have a leftover meal or at least a little bit. So that's one thing to keep in mind too. Um, but yeah, and speaking of like HelloFresh and everything, I got I finally got on there when uh, Jim from the. Uh, home gadget geeks he had been on there you know using it and i was like all right fine i'm finally going to use one of his like free codes to get it to get started and uh so that made me think of we were supposed to be on home gadget geeks uh two weeks ago um they had yes. to cancel last minute i don't remember if we talked about this last week but we're scheduled to be back there august 13th so in a couple of weeks we'll be over there to talk cooling and stuff so just yeah. something and we can talk about I'll, I'll make sure to talk about our these mail delivery kits too I mean, go. I do have to say it is especially for you because you do four meals, right? You do for the kids as well. Well, so the kids kind of eat some of it. It really depends. So, yeah, I get uh, two meals every week. Okay, is all. Yeah, so we just do the two meal kit. Um, okay, but like what I, what I'm saying is, there's no leftovers that don't get eat. There's, you know, you think you're going to make a meal and then you never eat it. You know, yep. like you the groceries go bad with these meals. You always make. And usually, uh, like I said, there's no, there's no leftovers. Everything there's that no was in the waste. bag, like you've used it. And yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, definitely, like I said, check either one of those out. Uh, they, we, I do have links in there if you want to sign up or whatever. But um, but that will be it. We are gaming uh, over on Twitch after this. What's the game we're playing? I think we're going to play... I don't even remember. I just installed it. Hyperscape? Too. Hyperscape, Hyperscape, yeah. Yeah. I think we might play that and maybe switch over to Apex. We might have to switch back to Apex. Apex. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get a couple games of Hyperscape and at least to try it. Um, Go check check out our Discord. I linked a, a little highlight video. Uh, yeah, if you guys are on the weeks. Discord, I'm trying to make a I'm trying to make a highlight video now of every week's highlights. So I'm trying to get Shinny to maybe send me some recordings. If you start recording your stuff, I can throw some of it together. Uh, but yeah, we can. I can. Tr- we can try to do that. We'll see. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that will wrap things up here, guys. For everybody that was here on the live stream, we definitely appreciate it. Um. Definitely make sure you subscribe to the audio version as well. Just search for Think Computers, all one word, on your favorite podcasting app or software. Till next week, catch you guys later.